Hello, now I've got something very, very special to show you today. It's a Martini Henry, and it's a live, functioning, working Martini Henry. Not a deactivated gun, you know, nothing like that. It's a live, fully working Martini Henry, because our strange British laws mean if you're buying antique firearms, they are no longer considered firearms by law. Um, I suppose if you went and shot somebody with it, then you'd probably get done on a firearms offence, so don't do that, or you'd get done for murder as well, wouldn't you? But the point is that, according to the law, this is not a firearm. Without any licences, I can own it. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the Martini Henry rifle, and also talk, you know, also about our strange gun laws in the UK, because I know that interests people. So, this is a carbine version of the Martini Henry. The full one is a lot longer than this but the sort of carbines came about later because, you know, as gunpowder and things got better, you didn't really need the full length one, and the full length one was a bit, you know, of a probably burden to handle. But this is surprisingly light. I haven't weighed it, but, you know, for a fully working rifle, it's not all that heavy. So it's basically all just steel and wood. Now, I was going to see if I could find any dates or anything on this one. There's all the crown markings that are quite faded, but sort of in the serial numbers. But... I'll just hold those up to the camera a bit so you can hopefully see them with the light. There's some going down on the barrel. But the point is, you know, fully functional firearm. So just because you'll get people get really funny about trigger discipline and things like that, this is not going to be loaded and it isn't currently loaded at the moment. I will show you the mechanism of it, um, and I will show you a round, but the round will not be loaded into the firearm, and, um, you know, it will not be discharged. So, you know, because I know with some people they get really, really funny about firearms discipline, even on the videos where I've deactivated guns and no ammunition for them, where you, you sort of go, really? You know, I know it's all well and good to have very good firearm discipline, because you never want to negligently discharge a firearm, but when, especially in other videos, I've got guns, you know, that don't shoot, um, and I've got no ammo for them. Seems very, very strange when it's essentially a prop at that point that people are going to be obsessed over that. So Martini Henrys went into service anyway with the British Army in the 1870s. And as far as I'm aware, it was the first British Army rifle to actually um, use a full metallic cartridge. There'd been other guns sort of converted to do that, but the Martini Henry was a ground-up gun designed to basically work with metallic cartridges. Now these were black powder rifles, but they did have metallic cartridges. So it's kind of strange to think about, but think it's basically a full metal cartridge as you'd see them still, you know, surprisingly modern looking, but the thing was it shot black powder, not smokeless powder. So lots of smoke came out when these are shot. Um, if you've seen Zulu, they're very famous from that, but that's the full long versions, not the carbine variants. Um, but this basically doesn't have um, an internal magazine. You load one round in through a sort of trapdoor system, you shoot it, eject it, and load the next round. So this is your trapdoor where your round goes in. So as you can see there, you know, it's got the indent for the round, but there's nothing there. And the under lever bit is underneath. So what you do, Pull the lever, and as you can see, the trap door has swung open. So you'd push around in there, then you close that again, it closes the uh, chamber. You'd obviously take it, you'd aim, and obviously bear in mind, I have not got this loaded, as I said, and you just saw it was empty, and you'd pull the trigger, hear that big strong mechanical action. Um, and that's how it'd shoot. So, it shot a very big round. The 577 Martini Henry, and there's one for you to see there. So, as you can see, how it would work, I'm not going to do it as I said, but you'd open the action, you'd push this in, and um, you know, close the action. That'd be done. Now, let's talk a bit. The British Army used this, I think, pretty much until the Lee Enfields were majorly accepted into service, and these are still used in some areas of the world. This one was apparently captured from Afghanistan, being used by the Taliban. So, there you go. It does has an interesting history, you know. Old British weapons being used against British troops. But I suppose it wasn't any different than the Soviets being shot out of Kalashnikovs by the Afghans. So there you go. But, you know, lovely, lovely rifles. Again, this isn't really going to be a full history video. I think Forgotten Weapons has got a very good video if you want to know about the history of the Martini Henry. Um, and this obviously isn't going to be a shooting video, um, for reasons I'll get into in a second. So, with Martini Henrys um, and British gun laws, this is where it gets quite strange. So, Britain has a thing with all of our various gun laws about antique firearms. Now, I think they do come under a section, whatever it is, section 58 or something, for antique firearms, but antique or obsolete calibre guns are basically classed as not firearms anymore because they think you'd have to go to so much effort to get the ammunition and shoot them. You know, it's going to be well out of the price range of, I guess, somebody wanting to um, collect guns to shoot people. You know, it sounds a bit of a morbid thing, but I think that's the reason, because... 
thankfully, uh, we've had very because often it's down to incidents happening and then knee-jerk political reactions while things are banned. So obviously, if you consider that nobody has really, as far as I'm aware in this country on the big scale, bought antique guns, gone to massive efforts to get antique ammunition or obsolete caliber ammunition to shoot people, you know, like gangbangers, um, that's why there's never been a problem with it. Now, that's not to say that unfortunately in the future we might have restrictions passed because some idiot decides they're going to go and do stupid things with a deactivate, not a deactivate, sorry, an obsolete caliber gun, antique gun, you know, things like that, and the media will get all over it and the laws will get worse for everybody. But as it stands at the moment, you can own these without, if you're over 18, you can buy one, own them without a license. You don't have to store them in a gun safe or anything like that, although I'd advise that I will be storing this Martini Henry when I'm not showing it in videos in my gun safe, once it's more secure and nobody can get their hands on it, basically. Um, and it's a valuable asset. But the point really is that, you know, because we've not had any big high-profile incidents, um, no laws have been passed on these sort of things. So I think they've just got around when there was all the extra restrictions put in, simply because, you know, nobody was doing anything with them. For those of you that don't know about UK firearms history, because this does uh, surprise a lot of people for private ownership, prior to the Hungerford Massacre and the Dunblane school shooting, there was actually no restrictions, really, um, on, you know, semi-automatic rifles and pistols. So it was a lot like a lot of US states are today, which a lot of people wouldn't believe, but if you go and look it up, that's true. You know, it, sadly, it just took a couple of idiots to ruin it for everybody, where well, they went and shot up, you know, schools or their villages or whatever, but, you know, it ruins it for everybody else. Um, with antique firearms, I think there was a case of some bloke getting done because he was sort of a gun importer and all that, he had all the legal documents, and he was funneling antique uh, firearms to gangs and reloading the ammunition for them. But, you know, that's always in the minority, and you don't want people like that to spoil it for everybody else. So... From what I understand of UK firearms law with this, I said I can own this perfectly legally. If I was to go and shoot it, I think I'd have to register it as either a Section 1 or Section 2 firearm, but you can unregister them as soon as you want. And I know these sort of guns are popular with those sort of firearms collectors for that reason, because it's not like a gun you have to hand in or whatever if you, you know, lose your licence or don't renew your licence or something like that. So with these, of course, yes, if you've got them and you've got the ammunition, there is nothing stopping you shooting them without having a licence. You shouldn't do that, it's illegal. But, you know, the point is that that's how the law stands with these. But to simply own them, collect them and all that, no, you don't need any licences. So I've given this a bit of a polish up, it was a bit rustier and marked on the metal. I'll definitely give it a nice, probably silicon lubricant clean later on. The reason being that's very good for preserving metals and, you know, stopping rust developing on them. Um, and this is a gun I really want to look after, because yes, I can't see a date stamp on this unfortunately, but I would assume this is well over a hundred years old. You know, it's kind of strange to think, isn't it, you're holding something like that's that old and it still works, but there we go. So the Martini Henry, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, I mean, beautiful in a destructive way, like a lot of these things are. It has a sling on it as well. This is one of those weird old kind of leather things. I, I'm not a massive fan of slings like this. I might take the sling off, um you know, and then replace it with a more modern leathery belt sling. Oh, didn't want to knock the wardrobe with that. I assume that you can still fit bayonets to the carbine version. I don't actually know how the lug works. It might just be a socket lug. But yeah, there you go. So I'll show you the action one more time. You've got this under lever design. So you hook it open, opens up the chamber. You thumb your round in. Um, as I said, I won't demonstrate that here. And it's not very good practice to load a round into a gun inside and all that, you should be doing it at a range where you're ready to actually be able to discharge it. So you thumb your round in when it's on that little trap door type thing, lift that up back up, it closes the breech, it's a bit like some air rifles, you know. Then you aim, right up. and yes, lovely lovely bit of history. So um, yeah, for those of you that don't know about the Martini Henry and are more interested in them, Hickok's done a good video on it, um, Ian from Forgotten Weapons has done excellent videos on the Martini Henry series. Um, and there's lots of videos of different Americans, you know, shooting them. Probably people in Britain shooting them, in all honesty. Um, but I got this from D&B Militaria, because as well as selling deactivated guns, which I don't really have an interest in anymore, just because of how our laws keep changing on them. And the prices keep going up. Uh, they also do antique and obsolete calibers that require no licenses from a normal pleb like me. So, there you go. If you're interested in something like the Martini Henry rifle, and you're in the UK, you can legally own these. So, if you want to exercise that right, I advise you do it. It's not the cheapest thing in the world to buy, but it's certainly a lovely bit of history, isn't it?